Hey, Hana, there's so much happening in Melee. This, it's not even the fact that I keep saying maybe we shouldn't be a Genesis pre, 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 pre show. We shouldn't necessarily do that. But every <laughs> single week, there's something new. There's a new wrinkle to Genesis 8. And it will probably, in all seriousness, be a top three event of the year. So I think it's fine for us to do this, especially when there's been some there's been some big announcements about Genesis 8 and the year 2022 in general. So, Hada, I will let you lead off with the first big thing that you want to talk about as it yeah, pertains to I what mean, happened uh, in Melee this week. Definitely a, a lot of cool developments. Uh, you know, I, I'm just going to go and lead with the elephant in the room. You know, we got a fat pizza sponsor, and that's pretty freaking cool. You know, all the memes aside with, you know, sociopath uh, Papa John. But, like, yeah, we got... <laughs> the reckoning is coming <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah we've got um we've got a big name sponsor for just about every single major this year and of course that did lead off um i believe the leading uh voice behind that was ken chen aka hot bid from the bts team and uh yeah it's a really cool thing and i remember like back in 2016 2017 i was commentating a tournament called uh smashville 7 and a friend of the melee scene there in indiana um was a partial owner of the local like franchise like like pizza hut franchise and so they had like a bunch of free pizzas there for the staff and for uh the top eight players which was super cool and i'm like okay we have a a food sponsor and so like me commentating that event i got free pizza all day and that was super sweet but now like we have like the corporate level sponsor for the entire um like major level circuit this uh this 2022 and I think this is definitely just a tipping block. Like, how are we going to push the envelope on this process and get our big name sponsors moving forward? It's a, it is a, de I do picture it as a tipping off point. So, what was really interesting, if you go to Ken Chen on Twitter, aka at hot underscore bid, you'll get a great thread about not exactly how it all came together, you know, blow for blow, detail for detail, but a few things that I love about this thread from Ken is firstly about how how Melee and Smash in general, the events that we put on, they deserve to have these level of sponsorships. Mm -hmm. it, this, is not, this is not something that should just go, oh, we only have 70,000 viewers at the peak of our tournaments, average of 30,000 <laughs> viewers across pools, top 64, all the way to top eight. No, no, no. This is, this is, this is worthy of, of sponsorships. This is worthy of someone paying to say, hey, put our name up front and out there to a whole entire community of people who love watching the game engaged people how many times have we heard you know the melee people the smash people they will they will engage with all this kind of stuff so i mean i'm gonna buy a papa john's pizza i'll i'm a i'm usually a domino's person but i'm gonna i'm gonna friggin buy a papa john's piece of if not the weekend of genesis 8 then at least for one of these many many sponsored events that papa john's is putting their name on top of so we take those but also the other cool thing about this thread that i wanted to point out is that it was sort of reminded me of the smash world tour team they put it out for a smash world tour 2020 this is going to be the biggest thing ever mm -hmm. for smash and we were all very excited but at the same time that was being announced covid was becoming a really big thing and it was only like a few weeks later that march came around and everything got shut down in 2020 so mm -hmm. The same kind of process in early 2020, according to Hotbid, according to Ken, we were about to announce a mainstream multi-event sponsor on a similar scale, and then COVID happened. So again, there were really cool things happening in 2020. We had to get cryo-freezed, go into the online era, have rollback, thank you, Fizzy, have cool things going even today, and get you know, nice little sponsors and stuff for even the salt mine, shout outs to drop, you know, that kind of stuff. Yep. That's really, really cool. But then for these big majors where, of course, this is going to have a lot of attention, a lot of eyes, a lot of legacy. Whoever wins Genesis 8, whoever wins CEO, whoever wins Smash Con, The Big House, and Riptide, and there's all these, other, and all these other tournaments that Papa John's is sponsoring, these are all really big tournaments. They all add to the big thread of Smash and Melee especially. So it's really, really cool that even though so much in the past two years went off track, off the rails... We are, we are still, e even up to now, saying we can bring ourselves back from the brink. It just reminds me of all the times you hear about Melee and Smash going down, and that somehow we just keep saying, no, it's not going to die. Grassroots is <laughs> fuck. Really yeah, love we're that. Gonna go ahead and, we're going to drag ourselves up by our bootstraps. We're going to get it done. 
And uh, yeah, you know, speaking of, you know, moving on, you know, something similar, but also something, you know, very reminiscent of what we've been excited for many, many years in the past. We have uh, the announcement of Smash Summit 13 presented by Coinbase. So uh, shout out to Coinbase, you know, um, sponsoring things like The Yard, um, Hungry Box specifically, I believe, becoming an official ambassador for Coinbase. <laughs> Go um, coin box, yeah. And the coin box, yeah. The uh, $1,000 weekly tournament, which is absolutely mind-blowing. They did announce the first six uh, the first six invited players, that being Leffen, Plup, Zane, IBDW, Mango, and Pipsqueak. So the two top from Europe, uh, of course, the proverbial big three in Mango, IBW, and Zane, and of course, Plup. Definitely still in that top five level caliber. So I'm super excited to see that he also got that instant invite. But um. Uh, Notably, a um, a certain Yoshi main currently out of the equation, but we did learn through a post later from uh, Red Bull's own Amsa um, out from Japan that he actually has a very close friend's wedding that same weekend, and so he decided he could not attend the event. This will be the first um, Smash Summit since I believe Smash Summit 4 or 5 that Amsa will not be in attendance, so we're not going to see a crazy you know, Amsa H-Box, you know, 30 minute dreamland banger like we usually do every single summit but i mean for if you're gonna go for a timeout i mean i think amsa hbox is probably gonna be the most one of the more hype timeouts to watch but of course mad loves amsa um you know gotta go support the homies in the big moment in their lives like that so hope to see him at the next big events though because he'll be moving to vancouver hopefully sometime in this year that's the commitment that he's made so Another thing that I think about, like, think about how crazy it is that Amsa is not going to be at Summit 13 is that at Summit 12, Plup never went. He was, he didn't, he didn't play into an invite spot and he didn't go through the voting process. And it was crazy that Plup wasn't there, but it led to so many cool matchups. It's just kind of the same thing. Like, Amsa not being there is really unfortunate, but then. I, I guess in a you can't fill a void of a Yoshi by putting in another Yoshi because they're they're not quite all on the same level as. As yeah. Amsa, but a plup sort of in the same vein with Sheik. Not that I'm saying players like Spark or or Face Roll or any of the other really good Sheiks can't do it, but it's just interesting. It was so weird that Plup wasn't at the last summit this time. Amsa won't be at the upcoming one, but yet mm -hmm. we just keep finding ways to enjoy the melee anyway. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely gonna be a really cool summit. And they're actually doing a survivor theme, so Throwing it all the way back to um, to Ken, the king of Smash, going on Survivor. And, of course, you know, my personal friend in Trey the Trash Man. One of the biggest Survivor fans I know is uh, was so, so excited. And he's actually been to the last two summits he did by a VIP slot. So I know he is constantly going to be hitting that refresh button so he can go ahead and hop in and get those VIP slots as quick as humanly possible. So, um, so shout out to anyone who's going to be attending the event. It looks like a really cool idea. But I'm really excited because I do know that a lot of those slots are up for grabs at Genesis. This is going to be the one big event right before Summit. And so I think I believe four play-in spots are up for those top four placements outside of the invited players. So are we going to see a player like SFAT? Are we going to see a player like um, God Johnny or Nun or uh, Gatsu? Any of the Falcons make their way in. Um, so, But what it really stands to believe is there's a lot of great up-and-coming talent that have not seen an invitation like this, or maybe you haven't been in, even been ranked before, who realistically can pull one or two upsets and get one of those top four spots. We could see someone like a J-Flex or a B-Bats, you know, squeak their way in, like maybe get a couple upsets along the way and find their way and smash them at 13. That would be so exciting. I mean, B-Bats in a top eight for Genesis 8 or, or J-Flex would be mind-boggling, mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. you there's going to be so many good players at Genesis 8 that I honestly, like even a player like Wizard, like are they going to make top eight? Like that's what I'm saying. Like Wizard yeah. is an insane yeah, actually, Falcon, yeah. insane mm -hmm. Falcon, but will he make top eight? Because it's going to be just an absolute bloodbath of, of the nations and in the end to a certain extent worldwide. Genesis is that kind of an event. That's why it's going to be, and it is worthy of all of us talking about it, even a few weeks out. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's super going to be super cool. So I don't even I don't even feel comfortable saying yet, oh, I think so and so is gonna make top eight because roughly speaking, of the six invited players for Summit 13, mathematically you would think enough of them make top eight that the mm -hmm. other players who make top eight, they they're already in 
Summit 13 just by virtue of placing high enough mixed in mm-hmm. with players like Mango and Zane and IBDW. Because you expect mm-hmm. to see those names in top eight for Genesis, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. I don't know if IBDW's ever been in a Genesis top eight, and he's got to make it, right? This is like, it's just going to be, it's just going to be stuff like that. I don't think like he that. has. Yeah, because yeah, I just, like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm scratching my melee brain. I don't think he's ever been in a, in a Genesis top eight. I don't think I've ever seen him on a Genesis stage. So that's what I'm saying. I want to see IBDW make a run at a Genesis eight, or if he doesn't make make a super big hot run, it's going to be at least top eight, and he's already mm-hmm. going to summit. So mathematically, it feels like the of the top eight, there will be four players who are already yeah. just by virtue of the top players that are already going to summit thirteen, and then the ones that are making top eight to Genesis. It'll probably end up like that, or maybe who knows? Maybe Mango and Blub and and, and IBDW will all miss top eight for Genesis, and it'll just be a mix of People like uh, <laughs> people like Jplex and Vbats and Pipsqueak might be the only one uh, up in top eight, and then this like grand finals Maybe. Pipsqueak versus Aklo or something. Well, Aklo's not going to Genesis actually. Now that I think about it, that's a shame. Aklo's yeah. going to Pound. I mean, though. let's go. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, I think it really shows a lot of cool ideas for who potentially could make a run and who has had that summit experience before. So we do have players like Swift and um, you know. Um, got Josh Man Sora, uh, from out in the Pacific North, not Pacific Northwest, but the um, Oceania, um, Australia. We had a lot of cool, um, either international or voted in players that came in for the last summit. Of course, my my really good friend Free Palestine did manage to get in there as well through the voting process, and I love to see that Millie got some uh, got some cred and actually got a got a win on the board over Kadoran. Yeah, so. I think uh, Summit last time was so exciting to watch because no one got donutted. No one went, like, winless, which was yep. super cool. And uh, so that was, I think that was the first time in Summit history that someone didn't leave, you know, completely battered, bruised, and just wanted to go home and cry. So <laughs> it's definitely a cool situation, and I'd love to see something like that at Summit 13 because it really has a testament for, you know, that the, the pack is catching up. You know what I mean? We're not in a point where like the top 10, top 15 are completely untouchable anymore. Yeah. That top, that blurred line between like even like the top five level to like top 15 is super, super close. And even so, like that top 15 to like top almost 60, 70 is so close. So everyone is at threat. Everyone can bleed. And that's so exciting going into an event like Summit here. And especially Genesis. And for Genesis, I'm anticipating that everyone in top 64 will be a name that I've heard of, that I know about, and it's going to it's that'll be the start of best of fives. By the way, they will not do best of fives until top 64, so that's going to be crazy too. Just even making top 64, and then after the weekend, very after is going to be Pound, which I will be attending in person. I'm very excited about that. I'm surprised mm-hmm. at how many people are going to be going from Genesis eight two pound the very next weekend but you already have players like hungry box and axe who are going to be doing that not like everybody's like on the list but even players like zane so i'm really excited about what <laughs> we've had months of not really big in-person stuff happening i think the last in-person event that was really big was summit 12 and before that main stage would you would you agree with that uh yeah we had main stage we had oh, um Smash World low Finals tide too. city Mm-hmm. Smash World Tour, we had Low Tide City. Um, what do we have before that? But all Rick in 2021 Tide. is what I'm saying. Nothing yeah, it's, that it's been has been like in been person big in 2022. And so in two weekends, we're going to have two major storyline altering events. It's going to be super fun. Yeah. And uh, I, the thing is, the hype is very obvious. You know, you look at no further than the salt mine. You know, weekly tournament pop bonus, of course, it draws in those names just by, you know, being able to cash out if you do well. But people are getting warmed up for Genesis, and that's very important. You know, just looking at our top eight here at the Salt Man this past week, you know, absolutely mind blowing. IBDW getting first, Aklo second, Crudo third, um, best chic in Florida currently now that Plup has made his exodus to Oregon. And no slouch um, either. Third at yeah, the Salt Man is amazing. Yeah, we got uh, Kem and JFlex bringing up fifth place. Kem, the best fox in Philadelphia. Of course, JFlex, one of the best sheiks in Tri-State. Uh, Zamu, currently number one in Arkansas. Ben, number one in Minnesota, um, coming in at seventh, respectively. And then outside of top eight, this is ninth place. 
Bobby Big Balls and Liquid Hungry Box. <laughs> Hungry Box didn't get top eight at an online weekly. That's how that's how the level has jumped. Hbox dropped sets to got I think it was Crudo and Kem. So his local Florida native and Kem, who is honestly a pup slayer, it's the the meme of me want Kem Dawson in every single Philadelphia melee stream is real. Kem destroys Dawson on the regular, and so it doesn't Aww. shock me that Kem can take <laughs> a set Dawson. over box. <laughs> but um, also rounding out that top eight, actually Dawson. Yeah, Dawson and Dreffen. Dreffen, my personal favorite player of all time. Um, and uh, big Dawson fan as well. Those guys rounding out our ninth place finishers. But yeah, we had another set of great players sprinkled in through the rest of the top 17 placings. Uh, Holiday uh, was formerly a um, a fringe top 100 player for about two years, I think 2018, 2019. Um, Otis, uh, Zealot actually getting 17th here at the Salt Mine, a great up and coming box from Ohio slash Colorado. Mech getting 17th, B Bats at 17th, Salt at 17th. So, Salt, another name we really, really want to watch out for going into these live events. People saying the best outside the top three Falcons. So, uh, <laughs> none, Wizzy, none, Wizzy, uh, Gatsu, S2J, those top four. And then the people are saying Salt is right outside that level. So, guys, please keep an eye out on Salt. And of course, some other big names, SFOP and Foss getting 13th, respectively, with uh, Younger and Owl actually also rounding out that 13th placement. So yeah, guys, Salt Mine was crazy this week. Um, if you want to see like what the what it means to be a hungry melee player and what it means to be, you know, fighting tooth and nail for every single uh placement that you can possibly get, look no further than the Salt Mine every week. You know, I try to do my best to get on the comp get on the mic for that, but new job is getting me a little bit more uh stressed to try to get there on time. I'm working really late. But um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a really cool time to be a melee fan because, like you're saying, Genesis is gonna be that deciding moment, that bloodbath, and we need to see where those chips fall. Yes, absolutely. And what about what about TNT? So those are the two big events that happen every week. Salt Mine is great. It's it's uh, Midwest and East Coast only though. So TNT is where we get to see the West Coast bracket. We get to see how the West Coast is doing. And of course, Kadoran is accusing West Coast players of not showing up as much. Like East Coast is showing up way more for these online events, and that's all fine and well. But you get you get players like Swap, Sfat, and Kadoran showing up. And so congratulations. I think it was Kadoran who won the most recent one. If I'm thinking correctly but i know that laud came out again and won another tmt on the <laughs> east coast side of things this week laud is like making a really strong case for being the best yeah, the best uh the best american peach i should say it's between laud and polish in my mind right now because polish has mm -hmm. some really really good in-person placings towards the end of last year so i'm looking forward to seeing uh, if either of them are attending Genesis, and I hope that one of at least one of them are, how the Peaches do, because there's been a Peach storyline in 2022 so far where players like Laud, Polish, and these other Peaches are coming out and showing some really good, really good stuff and making everyone yeah. go, oh, man, the Peach matchup, right. But then, even after having a chance to adjust, Laud is just still beating people and taking mm -hmm. first place events at stuff like TNT. So I'm really excited to see how the in-person peaches at stuff like Genesis and pound, how that storyline continues to evolve too. Yeah. A lot. Um, just coming off of receiving, uh, picking out his residency program. So Dr. Lod, real thing. Um, so super cool to see Lod succeeding in life and also succeeding in mail. Yeah. First at TMT this past week over Logan. Uh, Moki bringing up the third place slot. Bobby Big Balls and H Box uh, rounding out fourth and fifth. Um, S Fop also claiming a fifth place spot, tying with H Box. And then we have Salt and J Flex actually coming in at seventh in that top eight here for the East Coast. Moving on to the West Coast, we do have Kadoran bringing in first place, uh, beating out S Fat and S Fop. So the S Foxes taking out second and third from California and Texas, respectively. Uh, Mango's friend Lucky taking number four. Uh, Salt and Bobby Big Balls, the two more Texas residents, rounding out fifth. Uh, Far, the number one chic in Mexico, uh, picking up seventh place. And Smash Daddy, one of the best up and coming foxes from the Cal from SoCal. So kind of the outside of that super top echelon of those space animals in California, but definitely a huge tournament threat. Smash Daddy getting round out that top eight. So. Yeah, like we're saying, we have a lot of incentive to hit up these, at least these high-profile weeklies. 
and they're really showing up with the quality of players as well as the quality of gameplay. So guys, keep up, keep up that grind. And um, it really drives a lot of storylines. And uh, even with um, you guys, like you're saying, there's up and coming Peach players like Lod and Polish. And um, with innovations in, you know, either controller mapping or innovations in controller styles, whether that be box, um, OEM controller, and of course the Goom Wave being able to switch and toggle buttons such as remapping your grab to X or remapping your jump to Z, um, allowing, you know, super technical players like Polish to revert back from that um, more uncomfortable claw grip where you can grip the controller like so. So you're going you're gonna to wrap this thing around here and use this, the side of your finger, to the Z button, and then use your middle finger to hit, to hit your um, Z button, you can more hold it more natural, and so this would be your grab, and this would be your jump. So imagine, for float cancels, this is way more natural. And again, as a Peach player, I wish I had that option when I was coming up, but now I'm, you know, rocking the rectangle, and honestly, <laughs> it's kind of cheating. So for Peach, <laughs> it's really important that these button ma remap ups are a thing, because... All you, you look no further than Lod's Twitter and you're seeing triple up air strings at low percent on Sheik and Falcon on shield. And Puff. And then just popping and them puff. up. Yeah, and, and Puff, yeah. So Lod is really taking this new <sighs> remapping to heart and doing a lot of stuff that people thought was box specific. And, you know, as someone who plays Peach on a box, you look no further than some of my content. You know, so those float cancel up airs are absolutely devastating to open up your punish game. And they're super liable when you have either consistency with remapping your Z for a controllable grip or with the box and digital style controllers to make sure that you're not going to get miss inputs rocking out those really early punish game strings. And that's going to be a huge difference maker moving into big crucial moments like uh, sets of the Genesis. Just this don't run into Bobby Big Balls. He'll accuse you of zip zipping and cheating. And <laughs> just, <laughs> that's another. How does... How does he do it, man? He just keeps churning out. He's like a... Oh, he's a clip machine. <laughs> yeah, clip machine. 24K, oh, a clip who's machine. a newer Ultimate Puff player who's been going viral on Twitter a bunch. Like, Bobby Big Balls this has kind of been the viral Melee player most of the time for Twitter, it feels like, recently. Uh, that and maybe tweeting as well, you know, doing mm. tech chessing with Sheik. I don't know if you saw oh, that. Oh, my God. That was, that was pretty marvelous. Tech, was. tech chessing, that was sweet. That but, was yeah, crazy. like, I... I am very vocal about how I think Smash Ultimate is a bad game, but 24K makes me almost want to play that game. That dude is honestly a genius. He's a content master of mine. He's honestly hilarious. So big ups to that dude. I mean, he just keeps putting out these Twitter bangers, and I'm like, you know, I don't like the game. I love your Twitter account, bro. That's, that's, that's good stuff right there. <laughs> We're appreciative for Ultimate for drawing in people who then look at Melee and go, wait a minute, Melee's better. So thank you, Ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> the best piece of advertising Melee ever had. Oh, I just made somebody <laughs> mad in chat. What about Our Place? Speaking of, so I didn't know what Our Place was at all. Mm -hmm. I guess I wasn't on Reddit until mm -hmm. earlier this year anyway. But apparently this has been a thing before where they have this big old white canvas for you to put pixels mm. of pixels on anyone can mm. put on pixels blah 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 you want to make art but the problem is that mm. anyone on the internet with a reddit can contribute to it and so i'm mm -hmm. seeing tweets about this r slash place and then i'm seeing melee specific stuff and seeing these really cool images of people trying to put the character select screen onto the r place they're trying to put they're trying to put the slippy the Slippy uh, mascot. They're trying to put on the uh, reflector, Slippy.gg, r slash SSBM, Dreamland with the plant trees, folks, all this kind of cool stuff going on. I want to give a shout out to, I think Red Drum has a lot to do with organizing mm -hmm. a Discord and getting all the melee people and all the Smash people to put on Smash related stuff on the r slash place. And also, mm -hmm. apparently, somebody named Oswald. Yashi was telling me that Oswald did streams of just coordinating, hey, we need to do this, or we need to go shape with those with those people, all that kind of stuff, because mm -hmm. sidling room for something that anyone can contribute to, especially when it's on like a limited time basis, because r slash place is now over. You can see the history of it, but there's nobody's yep. can put uh, any changes into it anymore. Really, mm -hmm. really interesting concept. I I'm surprised that it doesn't happen every year. Maybe it was just too degenerate and they stopped. But bringing it back, I feel like, from what I could tell, it went pretty well. And shout outs to all the Melee and Smash people for making it happen, getting us onto the board, because it just 
means that we're still out here. Still, can still beat up other community. Oh, beat up is the wrong word, but you know, we got our stuff on, and maybe you didn't. It's all good. Yeah, I mean, it's a. Uh, it was definitely a cool thing, you know. A lot of uh, people who with uh, with small fan bases or smaller communities got their chance to you know make something cool and put something in history. And it was really cool to see, you know, either like the melee character select screen or like an adjacent melee character select screen show up for a little bit. And of course, the the melee shine with uh, the slippy logo was absolutely awesome to see. And it really was kind of like the wild, wild west of the internet just for a hot second. Um, you know, so even some communities just going so far as like to terrorize other people's art. I was watching um a, a League of Legends stream with a with a European streamer named Drew Toot. And his whole point was to try to delete League of Legends from r slash play. So he and his like 8,000 viewers went and they were just putting black dots on anything related to League of Legends. So that would be either like <laughs> Arcane or r slash Draven or r slash Lux or whatever. They're just putting like um League art on the on the r slash place and then just completely blacking it out and then seeing like the war go back and forth because the second people realized that their art was getting taken down they were fighting back with their own forces and trying to replace it as fast as it was going and um god that was it was so funny so cool a lot of great content popped out of it and of course um i think xqc actually got a bunch of crazy um stream numbers from an xqc one of the probably most concurrently watched twitch streamers on the platform um, and his a lot of streams, he just sat there and watched the development of R slash place and with his community alone had a lot of swing. And I think he actually broke the concurrent viewer for a single product stream on Twitch's platform, period. So when it wasn't a big event, it was just one streamer, you know, doing a daily stream. He had the most concurrent viewers, period, out of anything, out of any um content ever on Twitch. So big ups to the juicer, man. Big ups to the juicer community. A lot of cool stuff coming out that way. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that Melee had a little piece of that of that puzzle. Oh, and also there was a P plus symbol put on there as well. So shout out to P plus for making it happen. Even more impressive because uh, obviously P plus is a little bit smaller of a community, but still making it happen. So to close out, do you have any other final thoughts before we get going here? Because we are, <laughs> we are already almost at 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, hey, we had a great time recapping the week. I had a lot of cool stuff going on um i mean i'm i'm just so excited for a lot of these cool developments and then um we have a lot of really exciting stuff coming up so this is definitely like a preparedness episode and i feel like we'll have a lot of reaction episodes coming up soon so <laughs> guys uh check us back for some awesome reactions to how the development of genesis went how summit voting is going and um what we can do to really blow up and see what's going on here in the melee scene in weeks weeks to come. Yes, and we'll be trying to get some folks on who are trying to enter the voting process. I think that'd be really cool for somebody to join you and me, Hada, for <laughs> quite a nice little promotion. I mean, hey, uh, when when Yangling was running for Smash Summit 11, Mikey came onto the podcast. Shout outs to the cheat to talk about Mikey. Yangling's campaign. So you know is. We're, we are out here, too. It's not just Radio Melee and Melee Stats where you can tell the people to vote for you in your Smash Summit 13 campaign. It's just a thought. Also, shout-outs to Amaranth for being a pro-button remapper when yeah. IVW was going out <laughs> against Genesis Tios and saying, I better be able to use my remapped controller because if not, I'm going to rage. And uh, shout-outs to Jaden from Melee Stats Discord who saw that one of the people who liked that tweet was Amaranth, of all people. Uh, sure, I know. <laughs> the development Dude, that, that, that's the content queen right there god <laughs> like, like big ups to amaranth a uh, big ibdw fan and um you're a fan of melee um and um yeah let's just leave it on that give ammo some promotion let's have a good week okay guys <laughs> see you next week <laughs>